Hello, this is Lindsay, and welcome to my messy world. <laughs> yeah, I did not even clean my desk off before I started this video, but hey guys, this is real life, and I had the motivation to turn the camera on and start the next episode in Lindsay Creates, so we're just doing that, you know? This is real life. Um, like, I have tags here that I have started. These might be pretty in the journal, actually, I don't know. I need to set those aside. Okay, so we are working in this rose journal. These signatures are ready to be sewn in, so you get to watch me do that today. And I'm going to try to give some tips. Usually when I give tips, I uh, fall flat on my face, and I say do it this way, and then it doesn't work for me that one time, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we'll have success. I've been working on some collage pockets and things for um, the shop. That's what those are. I'm just going to set them out of the way. All right. Oh, what a mess. What a mess. I should have cleaned, but that's okay. All right. So four signatures. Here's our cover. If you haven't been following along, um, this is the cover. And this is from my Nature Image Club. So you might want to join that. And we have our four signatures that we're going to sew in. So this is how I do it. You know, there's a bunch of different ways that you could do it, I'm sure. Here's my all. I like to use bigger paper clips when possible. And, well, find the middle of my signature. And what I do is I put one big paper clip here and one big paper clip here. If I have smaller paper clips, I'm probably going to use more. I eyeball stuff. I do not, um, yeah, use any mathematical formula. About the middle, I use my all and I poke through. And then over here and over here. And then what I do is clip the next set of papers probably run out of big paper clips, but we'll see. Okay. Then I stick the signature that has the holes in it inside this one. And I use the holes I already punched as a template. And I just punch through to through the other signature. This only works if you have an all that isn't too fat. Um, I have a fat one up here somewhere on if I can show you. Well, I don't know what I did with it, but if this part of the awl is too fat, the holes will be too big. So you have to have a thin awl or you have to mark it a different way. All right. So I'm going to double check that I got those holes and I'm probably just going to push all the way through and make sure they're ready for a needle and thread. Okay. Then I get the next one ready. I rarely do four signatures, so it's a little tedious for me. I really don't like sewing in signatures. It's just the most boring part of creating a journal. I'm looking for a big paper clip, but I'm, I might just have to use two smaller ones. Okay. Make sure everything is the right way. I prefer the creative process, the poking holes and the stitching. Yeah, not fun. But if I don't overthink it and I just keep doing it like it's an assembly line, I eventually get through it and get to the fun part. I just make sure those holes are ready for the needle. If they're too small, the needle will get stuck and really frustrate you. If they're too big, it tears the paper and looks awful. So it's a balance that you get as you sew. A lot of times I comment um, when I'm doing marketplace videos and marketplace journals, a lot of times I comment about how signatures are loose or you need to have signatures that are well sewn in. So that's why I'm kind of going step by step here, to kind of show you how you can actually do that quite easily. And it's not as hard as it looks. It does not have to be perfectly scientific to be secure. All right, I'm doing this. this is the last signature, punching those final three holes. You could do more holes. You know, it can look pretty, 
but it, to me, most of the time, it doesn't look that much more pretty than just the three holes. And then there's less to have to fuss with unless you're doing a really fancy binding, which I'm not doing today. Okay, so now I have to make a template for punching the holes through the spine. I almost always punch the holes all the way through the spine and let that exposed stitching show. It's a lot easier than trying to do hidden stitching. Um, and I like the way it looks, so that's what I do. Okay, I'm gonna take a pen and I'm just gonna mark a little bit on the top where those holes are because it can be hard to see. One, two, and three. And I use this signature as my template. I can see this is my spine. And if I have four signatures, I want two to the left of the middle and two to the right of the middle. And I do not do this super scientifically. I eyeball it, line it up, set it down and make my three, well, <laughs> three marks. And then from there, I eyeball it. This is the part where it's a junk journal. Um, sometimes it's not appropriate to have sloppy work. I wouldn't call this sloppy, but you know, perfection, if you wanna get your ruler out, that's great. I don't have the patience for that, so I don't. But for those of you who would like to do that, I think that's wonderful. So now I have one, two, three, four for my signatures. And then, you know, eyeballing actually works really well. I've done this lots of times. It still looks great. And if that's bothering um, you and you love a ruler, then I wish I was more like you. I really do. Okay, there's all. There's my template. That's how I do it. I eyeball it. I don't worry too much. Okay, grab my all again. And then I just poke through like that where I made those holes. I have to be a little careful that I don't bend the spine too much, which a nice and sharp awl will help with that. The big fat ones kind of make ugly holes. And if you did make an ugly hole and you really don't like the way it looks, but you still can stitch it in securely, cover the outside spine with some fabric or wallpaper and you'll be good. And what is my puppy chewing on? Oh, good boy, it's a bone. He's been chewing shoelaces and chewing, chewing all sorts of things up. He got a pair of scissors and chewed them up. I was like, oh my word. Okay, now we're gonna stitch. I'm glad you guys are keeping me company for this because I really don't like this part. So it's nice to have some company. All right, what color stitching? I usually don't worry too much about it. I have yellow here. I don't want yellow. I mean, I could use it. I think I have white down here somewhere, do I? Mm -hmm. I, ugh, I should have had that out ahead of time. I think, I think I'll do green because we have greens and pinks. So this is just, I think this is a number 10 crochet thread. I keep my eye open at Goodwill when I'm there and I can often get them for 49 cents or 99 cents. Grab my scissors and I don't always double it, but it's really a good idea because it can, when you're tying it off later, it can break if you don't double it. So I'm doubling it. I have it doubled on my needle and I like to use the embroidery needles. Okay, take my first, I start with the first one. That's just how I do it. You could start from the back, really doesn't matter. And I go through the middle hole and through the middle hole. And then I just do a simple pamphlet stitch. The more signatures you have, the more difficult it is to maneuver because your spine is big. You have to count your holes right. So just go really slow, double check everything before you move on. Otherwise you'll be tearing out signatures or creating new holes. And that looks for a really, makes a really shoddy looking journal. So sometimes it's hard to get that needle all the way through, but we will do it. back through the middle and get. when you do double the thread, it can be a little harder because you have more thread going in and out of every hole. 
but you know it's going to be a lot more secure that way. So you just wiggle the needle, pull it through. And these aren't going to be perfect, but they're going to be secure, and that's the most important thing. All right, there we go. Now we come to the tie off. All right, I make sure it's pulled tight. I look here to make sure it's pulled tight. And then when I do my knot, and I've tried to explain this before and failed, but when I do my knot, when I go around the second time, I pull this cutoff end all the way taut down this way. And I hold it with my left hand. And then my right hand is the one that I pull the knot. The reason why I do that is it makes a very tight, secure knot. And then I just do it one more time and clip. You could clip the strings longer if you want to add buttons, beads, or charms. I'm not doing that for this journal, but you could. All right. I am going to actually do this in real time, all four signatures. That way you get to see it done multiple times in a row if you want, or you can shut the, screw the video off after the first time if I didn't teach you anything new. A lot of you already know how to how to do this better than me, so you probably do not need this. But we just go to the next hole. We're going to start holding on to more pages and things. It's going to get heavier and bulkier, so we have to pay closer attention. I keep all of the signatures paper clipped together until I'm done, until they're all sewn in. Because I've tried taking, you know, not using paper clips back, you know, the first year, maybe two, I would say the first year, year and a half. And oh, I could re-stitch uh, re and re-stitch and re-stitch and I would drive myself crazy. This keeps the holes lined up. That one actually went a lot easier for me than the first one. Again, pull tight, double check. And I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna loop, pull, loop. And it's okay if things are loose right now, okay? Because this, well, where's my scissors? I just had them. I really just had them. Okay, here. I'm gonna make sure this is the same length because it's messing me up. There we go, okay. All right, loop, don't worry if it's loose, loop. Now, here's where you have to be careful, okay? This cutoff end that was in the middle, pull it tight and hold it. With the other hand, pull, that's all it is. And then the second time is really easy. And clip. That's two down. Two to go. Two down, two to go. I've seen some beautiful bindings in the marketplace by some of my artists. Oh, so pretty. I think Anna um, England, she's one that does gorgeous bindings, but there's other ones too. The patience it must take to do those beautiful stitches and add all the beautiful beading. I mean, I've done some like that before, but I don't have great patience. I want to get past this part so I can get onto the decorating part. That's my favorite part. All right, next signature. Make sure everything is right side up. And a good way, um, a trick, if you have a hard time accidentally sewing things upside down frequently, pick a paper, pick an outside signature paper that is easy to identify upside and right side up and upside down. I have script on this, so it's easy for me to see which way it should go. If this was, say, a plain pink piece of paper, I would have to keep looking in here and I might flip it the wrong way. But I have script, I have script. It's very easy for me to line things up the way that they need to be lined up. Okay, we are on signature three. I hope this one goes as smoothly as the last one. <laughs> Like I said, I rarely do four signatures. I don't remember the last time I did four signatures, so I'm challenging myself here. You're gonna see my flaws, I have many. It's not about doing everything perfect, it's about improving, and it's about, yeah, I, they're not super straight, but that's okay, that's okay. They don't have to be. 
They just have to be secure. All right, there we go. Come on, get in there. All right, let's go over the tying again. Make sure things are pulled tight. Okay, loop. It can be loose. Loop again. Pull the cut end taut this way, and then just pull the right. And then double knot and cut. One more to go. I know you're probably as bored as I am. Oh, I just dropped my needle. There it is. So this kit I'm using is script and lace. This, these papers here. One of my kits on my shop. I think it has 12 pages and three ephemera sheets. I think we're going to use some of the ephemera while we're decorating. Well, I'm not super straight, well, it's okay, it's okay. All right, last one. The more signatures I add, the more I should probably get a ruler, but real life, real life. All right, last one. Let's do it. Find that hole. Nope. We can do this. I know we can. Here we go. When I quit talking, you know I'm concentrating. Last one. Hopefully I've got this, whoops, right. My head doesn't get in the way of showing you guys. All right. Loop. It's okay if it's loose. Loop again. Pull the cut side taut. Pull. And pull again. Took me a long time to figure that out. Saved me a world of headache. Now I pull off all the clips that way I can see how the journal lays okay close it up and let's look at this pretty I can see it's not perfect but it's still this is totally acceptable as long as all the signatures are in there tightly it still looks really good not perfection, but that's fine. And then if you look here, just kind of wiggle the signatures. They're in super tight. There's no wiggle. There's no, I mean, it's just, it's great. They're not going anywhere. There's nice room between the signatures so we can really chunk it up and decorate it. Look at how pretty that sits. Look at how pretty that is. And we have done an excellent job. Thank you for watching. I know that was a boring one, but we're going to be getting into decorating next. And that is going to be really fun. I have my ephemera here to the side. And so hopefully we'll get through some decorating videos next week. Can't wait for that. If you have any um, thing you want to suggest or you want to see me do in this journal, while I'm filming it and decorating it, please let me know in the comments below so I can consider trying that trick or doing that. I know that I'm going to be using some of my new stencils and stamps, so that'll be fun. I'll see all of you later. Thank you for watching.